Xero is one of the most popular online accounting solutions for growing businesses. I've personally found Xero a lifesaver when it comes to managing my business accounts, transactions, and of course, taxes. So today I'm going to dive into Xero and share how small businesses like yours can get started up and running and familiar with Xero for all your small business bookkeeping needs. Now, just quickly, before you go ahead and launch into this updated Xero tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel. Okay, so with that quick note out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in and get started with Xero. Okay, so before we dive into our Xero dashboard, what exactly is Xero? Well, Xero is an all-in-one cloud-based accounting software born in my home country of New Zealand and has now become a popular accounting software for small and medium-sized businesses all around the world. I personally have Xero set up for two of my different businesses located in different countries. And it's made my life a lot easier when it comes to managing all my different accounting stuff across these two businesses. Okay, so let's dive into Xero. Now, if it's your first time using Xero, simply head over to your browser and type in Xero.com. And that's going to take you here, then simply navigate up to pricing. If we navigate down the page, you'll notice that Xero has three different pricing points. For most micro businesses like sole traders or home based businesses, the starter plan is sufficient enough. And for small businesses, if you're looking to grow and scale, then the standard plan is right for you. And premium is for larger, medium sized businesses. No matter what plan you choose, you can always upgrade at any time. You also have access to a 30 day free trial, allowing you to test each of these different plans and to identify which one is best for you. And you can see the different features down here, which we're going to cover in this tutorial. So go ahead, get started with either the starter or standard plan, navigate through the simple sign up process, and I'll meet you inside your dashboard. Also, it's important to note that for the purpose of this Xero tutorial, I'll be walking you through Xero from the perspective of a small business owner and not an accountant. And after navigating through this simple step-by-step -step process of signing up to Xero, you'll be taken inside your dashboard. Then navigate up to the top left-hand corner and you'll see we're currently on the demo company account. If I navigate down here, I can switch over to my business that's connected with Xero and I can manage my Xero account for this organization. If we navigate down here, we can also add an additional organization. And then you can simply switch between your different businesses. For the purpose of today's tutorial, I'll be navigating through the demo company and showing you how you can use Xero. Okay, so before we jump into our dashboard and cover important features and tools that you have access to inside Xero, we first want to navigate over to settings. And I just want to cover a few vital settings for properly setting up your account. Let's navigate over to organization details. Here you want to take the time to add your business details. Now, depending on the country that you're located in, some of the elements in this tutorial might be slightly different to your account. Again, add your contact information and ensure all this information is filled out correctly before navigating down to save. Okay, so let's navigate back up to the top and head back to organization settings. You also want to add your administrative users in here to help you manage your accounts inside Xero. Down here, you can manage currencies that your business uses, and then you can also connect third-party apps. Simply navigate down here and connect the apps that you want to connect to Xero. This could be your CRM platform, payroll, time tracking, or invoice software. So you can search for and connect your apps here. Let's navigate over to invoice settings. And here we want to create invoice templates. If we navigate down the page, we can navigate up to options, and click on edit. Here we can change the name of this invoice template as well as all these other settings down here. You can also choose elements that you want to show like the logo, show tax number, show unit price and quantity and more. Choose how you want the logo to display and then add your contact details that will show on all your different templates. You also want to add your payment details like your PayPal account as well as bank payment details and then you can modify this information down here. Once you've made any changes, click on save. Let's navigate back over to organization settings and then click on payment services. This is where you can add your payment services to allow your customers to quickly make payments through your invoice. Simply click add new payment service, navigate down to add payment service and set up the options that you want to add. Do you want to allow your customers to make invoice payments using their credit cards, debit cards or digital wallets like Apple Pay and Google Pay? Then come down and set up these options. Ideally, you want to add as many services as possible to streamline the process for collecting payments. Okay, so let's navigate back up to the top and click on organization settings. Now, just quickly, I want to touch on email settings. Take the time to set up your reply to email address and email template content. Then down here, you can manage your payroll settings. 
This is if you want to manage payroll inside Xero. You can also connect your Xero account to other Xero accounts. These could be suppliers or customers, which essentially allows for a more smooth and automated process when it comes to collecting customer payments and also for paying bills. Now, we also want to navigate up to accounting and then click on bank accounts. Then navigate down to add bank account. This is where you want to search for your bank account that you want to connect with Xero. This allows for a seamless integration between Xero and your bank account, meaning that you do not have to manually import transactions and all your account transactions will be automatically added inside your Xero account. Then all you need to do is reconcile those transactions and I'll show you how to do this shortly. So again, for a seamless integration between your Xero account and your business bank account, locate your bank, and then simply navigate through the process of connecting that specific bank account. It only takes a few moments to create that connection. Okay, so now that we've covered important settings, let's navigate back over to Dashboard. And as a small business owner such as myself, you'll spend a lot of your time on this dashboard. And this dashboard is essentially a snapshot of the different accounting activities happening on your account. For example, here we have business bank account, so this is an example of a bank account connected to our Xero account. These are all the different transactions that have been automatically pulled into our Xero account from our bank. Every time we create an in-store transaction or online using the connected bank account, those transactions will appear here. And we'll talk about reconciling items shortly. You also have account watch. These are the different accounts that you have coded to your different transactions. Here we have invoices owed to you. Then we have bills you need to pay cash in cash out and then an expense claim widget here we can also navigate up to edit dashboard and we can choose to show or hide these different widgets you can also come down and i can move these different dashboard widgets around let's navigate back up to the top and click on save changes now with some of these widgets you'll have the option to click on these three dots and you can edit these widgets for example the account watch list we can edit account watch list and simply add other accounts for example general expense i can click show on dashboard watch list and then hit save and now let's navigate back over to dashboard and you'll see that the general expenses account has been added to our account watch list now what we can do is add other reports for example navigate up to accounting come down to reports and let's say for example i want to add a few different ratios from a business performance standpoint Come down, click on business performance, then navigate down and choose the ratio that's relevant to your business and that you want to display on your dashboard. Simply click on these star icons next to the ratio. Let's navigate back over to dashboard and down here on my dashboard, you can now see this business performance widget with the three important ratios that I wanted to add to my snapshot. Now, what we can also do is navigate up to the top and click on this plus icon. And here we can quickly engage in a new action. We can create a new invoice, a new bill, add a new contact, create a new quote, add a purchase order, manual journal, spend money, receive money, and transfer money. So again, this is a quick action button that allows you to quickly access these different elements. Let's navigate over to business. Here we can access important analytics like short-term cash flow and business snapshot. And with each of these different reports, you can simply change the date range here. Here we can see how our business is performing year to date. We have the profit and loss, income, expenses, and then efficiency down here. Okay, so let's navigate back up to business and then come down to the next section, which is all about collecting payments. For example, we have invoices and here you can manage all your invoices here. For example, you can see the invoice status, awaiting payment, draft, invoice paid. And you can also select the filtering options. Here we have awaiting payment. These are all the invoices that haven't been paid yet. For example, if we navigate over here, we might want to send this customer an email with our invoice attached, as well as customize this default message here, explaining how this invoice is overdue and other details that you want to add. Let's cancel out of this and let's go ahead and create a new invoice by clicking new invoice. Navigate down and quickly add details like who this invoice is to, the date, the due date, the invoice number, reference and branding type that you want to select. Remember, this is based on the templates that you can customize the way that you like inside of invoice settings. Once you've added these details, come down here and then add the invoice details. And you can also add a new line item if you need to. Down here, you can add notes, you can save the invoice, and you can also approve the invoice over here, as well as these other options. Okay, let's navigate back over to business and then navigate down to online payments. Similar to what I showed you earlier, this is where you can manage your payments as well as your payment providers. Remember, this is where you can set up those payment services and allow your customers to pay using different methods. Okay, navigate back up to business 
And again, similar to invoices, you can create quotes and you can also see a sales overview. Below this, we have bills to pay, purchase orders and purchase overview. If we click on bills to pay, this is cash outflow. These are bills that you need to pay. You can also create a new bill if you like and manage your different bills as well as jumping between the different filtering options. This is a similar structure to invoices. So this section here, invoices, online payments, quotes, sales overview is cash in and bills to pay, purchase order, purchase overview is cash out. Then we also have expense claims and products and services. Under products and services, this is where you want to add and list the different products and services that you sell. Simply add each of your products or services in here then come down and click on save and add another or simply click save. Again, here you can manage all your different products or services. Here you can see this is golf balls, white three pack, and you can see an example of the purchase details as well as the selling details. Now let's navigate over to accounting. Under bank accounts, this is where you can connect your different bank accounts with zero. Then within reports, this is where you can essentially manage all your different reports. And you can see some of your important reports down here that you've starred. If we click on reports, you can see all the items that you've starred over here. You can also search for a specific report like I showed you earlier with the performance report. And you can also locate your other reports down here. Okay, let's navigate back up to accounting. Again, these are your reports that you can access and manage. Here we have our profit and loss statement. Again, you can add the date range here and you can compare previous periods. With all of your reports, you can come down and save as, draft published, or as a custom report. You can also export any of your reports as a PDF, Excel, or Google Sheets file. Again, navigate back up to accounting, and then we have advanced down here. Now, ideally, you want to connect your accountant with your Xero account, giving them access to all of this information. As a small business owner, you do not want to worry about all of these different types of accounts. Your accountant will help you understand and manage your different reports. Now, if we click out of here and navigate up to payroll, you can simply manage your payroll. Here's a quick snapshot overview. Under employee management, you can manage your employees, leave and timesheets, as well as payroll processing and administration. Let's have a quick look at employees. Here you can add and manage your employees and contractors, as well as view employee history and review sick leave. Again, down here you can see your current employees, as well as current contractors. Now let's navigate over to projects. Here you can view all your projects and time entries, as well as staff time overview. Let's navigate over to all projects. And here you can manage different types of projects. You can see draft projects, in progress, as well as closed. Now most likely you'll be using a different software to manage your different projects. You can also add a timer, and this is a basic time tracking solution for your different projects. Then we have contacts, and again, you can manage all your different contacts, your customers and suppliers. All right, let's navigate back over to dashboard, and then navigate down to reconcile items. You can also find this option under accounting and bank accounts. Let's navigate down the page. These are the items that we need to reconcile. So these are transactions that have happened in our bank account and that have automatically been imported into Xero. All we need to do is reconcile these different transactions, essentially making sure that you're adding the account you want to code the transaction to. For example, if this is correct, all I would do is click on OK. Again, over here you can see I spent this amount of money. This is the name of the account, and Xero has matched this transaction correctly. However, sometimes the details from your transactions do not match up correctly and you need to manually add those details in here. For example, the name of this contact is Smart Agency and you can see that contact has already been added in here. Then here we want to choose the account that we want to code this transaction to. Either start typing in the account or locate the account down here. I'm going to select Advertising, then enter Y. Add a description about this transaction. Then come down and choose a region. I'm going to select None. And then in New Zealand, we need to add 15% GST on our expenses. However, depending on the country that you're in, you'll have other options here. Then once you've reconciled that item, go ahead and click on OK. And you want to do this with all your different transactions. Xero slowly learns about the different types of transactions in your account, and therefore this process gets quicker and quicker every time. Again, make sure the information is correct. Who? Yes, this contact is correct. So the account that we want to code this transaction to, and then Y, bank fee. If this is all correct, again, click on OK. And that is how you can reconcile your transactions. 
Again, if we navigate up to the top, like I mentioned, you can quickly engage in any of these different actions. If we click on search, we can search for information inside our Xero account, as well as resources if we're looking for help. Notifications allow us to see all our notifications. And then over here, we have help. This is where you can locate helpful articles. Xero also offers 24 seven online support. Then if we click here, again, you can connect your favorite apps with Xero. And then you have your personal profile here that you can customize if you like. However, that is a brief overview and tutorial on how you can use Xero to manage your bookkeeping and accounting needs. And there we have it guys, that is it for this updated Xero tutorial, helping your small business better manage your online bookkeeping needs. Now, with that quick note out of the way, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Also, if you have any questions, make sure to pop them down below in the comments. With that said, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Take care.